Okay. Holding Pusuk Zion. Um, really have Rashi. Shimon Lamor. Just Rashi. Shimon Zayzuch Lahalos Neir Tomit. It was pure olive oil to have that continuous light. Some the Shimon Amishka. Shenase Limshoch Kli Amishka and Ramishkan Lakachon. It was made to anoint the vessels of the Nishkan and the Mishkan to sanctify them. Vuchlo Bsomim. Shem Nishcha also had spices, but it wasn't just the oil. Kamoshim Fush, Piki Siso. The Torah Sasamim, Shem Akdirum Chol Erva Boker, twice a day, half in the morning, half, half in the evening. Shem Fush Batot Tetzav, Loshin Ketores. Halos Kitur. Kitur means like a smoke. The Timros Oshem billowing up. Avni Shoim, Vavni Mluim. Stones, the Shoam stones. And the miluim stones. The question is what the word miluim means. Literally means to fill in. Now, in the Choshen, there were gold sockets. And the diamonds, they would fit into the socket to a point where the diamond, the colored stone, did not protrude at all. It was flat. So the side of the stone wasn't seen whatsoever. You only saw the face of the stone. So it was miluim. It filled in the socket fully. So, but the Shoah means that it was a specific a certain type of stone, Shoam stone. Shtaim hutzru shom l'torcha ifot, that was on the shoulders. Om beit bat v'tzav biluim. So Rashi said, why would they call it biluim? Al shem sh'osin lehem moshev, bezov moshev k'min gumo. It would be a gold, a gold inlay. Nosna evet shom l'malos haguma. And the stone was put in, it filled in the hole, the indentation in the golden. Therefore, they're called kruim av miluim. The Ramban takes issue with this over Rashi. Therefore, they refer to as the stones that filled in the sockets. Umokam Mamoshiv Kori Mishbetzes, and the location of where it was set into was called Mishbetzes. That's the the setting. Leiv Lachoshen Avni Shom Laefod, the Shom stones were for the Efod. Avni Miluim Lachoshen that was for the breastplate. Lachoshen Efod for Roshon after Tzaveh. Ein Mini Tachshit. They were ornaments which were worn by the Kohen Gadol. It's interesting. The what was the difference the number between the vestments of the Kohen Godel and Kohen Hedjet? Four. Right? So it seems to be over here that he's referring to the Choshen Ephod. See the others they're called big day they're all called big day kuna, but they're on a more specific level, the four vestments that won't be Kohen Hedjet, by the ordinary Kohen you have the the pants, the shirt, the hat, and then you had the belt, right? That's cl those were the clothing. Those were the vestments. He's referring to Kohen Godel had another four. He had the tzitz, right there. There was the gold plate on his forehead. He had the choshen, the ephod. But he's referring to these as what? He mini tachshit. He's not referring to them as garments. Even though we refer to them in the general sense as big day kuna, the, f the vestments of the Kohen, the Kohen Godel, but they're ornaments. They're ornaments. The pants, the coin, Godel wore the same four vestments as the coin hedge, but he had the additional four. What are the additional four? Meaning Tarshit. Even though the, um, I mean, the Gemara says that every one of the vestments atoned for another sin for Kalal Yisrael. You know, each one of them atoned for a sin, won't atone for uh, uh, a, a miscarriage of justice, like the Choshen Mishpat. If there was a financial, monetary uh, corruption, that would atone. The pants was for Gile Arayus, you know, for sexual relationships, uh, incest and adultery, whatever, that was Mechapir. Everything had its specific, its specific purpose. Okay, but he's referring to the Admini Tachshit. He had the meal, right? The meal was worn over the what? Over the shirt. Only the Kohen God wore the meal. Alan, meal. No, no, no. The meal was worn over. The shirt, the shirt is the ksonis is the shirt, and the the meal was was. No, no, the meal was like a a, a longer shirt worn over. Okay. The meal had the bells on the bottom, right, attached to the bottom. 
That's the meal. So was that a tachshit? Seems that's a begot, right? That that's a garment, that's a vestment. But he's referring to the chosh and the ephod. It's an apron. The ephod is an apron, and the chosh is the breastplate. Mean that mean a tachshit. So here the Ramban says, he s- quotes Rashi, and he speaks very strongly. Where he says, "Ve'einenu nochon ve'einai klau." It's pretty strong. It's incorrect. It has no. It has no validity whatsoever. Rashi's shot in Avdim Luim that it's the stones that fill in the sockets. Shikra ato b'Avdim Luim al Shem Shosid old litzavos lemali bem guma she asked him. He says they refer to the stones are now referred to as Avdim Luim. So if you say you're putting the stones into the Choshen, now we're gathering the materials, right, for the Mishkan, whatever they may be. Avnim Luim, he says, we're talking about something in the future. These stones will fill in the sockets. So that's, that's the reason to identify them now as Avnim Luim. Seemingly even independent of that, they're already identified as Avnim Luim. Kam Avni Shoam, shows Musabas Mishab, Mishbat Zosov, Lokoros and Miluim. I mean, each factually, each stone that was put into the breastplate had its, its name. <coughs> like at Avni Meluim, each one had its name. So why, he says, the stones that went on the shoulder of the Kohen Godel, it also filled in the socket. But then I refer to it as the Avni Meluim, even though it's, it, we, sh- we should identify them similarly. Go ahead. Korban Pesach and Mitzrayim. Korban Pesach and Mitzrayim. Right? It's not Dilma Mitzrayim. This is not Dilma Mitzrayim. Well, we read later, we read later about, it says, what are the, the vestments of the Kohen Godel? It says, L'chovod L'tiferis. It's for honor and for glory. So over there, it once mentioned, I would let Howard quote it, but I'm not sure if he quoted it accurately. There's a Shaloh Kodesh. The Shaloh says, the Gemara says in Abu Zora, Echulim, Sim Gemara, that um, the Yisra Akiva, uh, Moshe Rabbeinu officiated for seven days in the Mishkan. This is before Aaron and his sons were installed as Kohanim. So the Gemara asks, the Yisra, what did he wear? Right. What garment did he wear? Did he wear big day kuna? What did he wear? So the Marantz says he wore a white tunic. Question, did it have a border? It didn't have a border. So the Shaloh Kodesh explains that, I mean, he officiated, he brought Korban Yitzibor. He brought communal effort. Why do you have to wear big day kuna? So he explains it this way. He says, the vest, you have to have a vestment to serve Hashem. Initially, when Hashem created the world, what was the vestment? Vestment was the body. The person's the neshama. The body was was the was was the holy vestment. This is pre sin. Mm-hmm. What happens after of the eight of the eight sadas? The vestment became putrefied. It doesn't qualify anymore. Therefore, you need other vestments. L'chovet of tiforis. Moshe Rabbeinu was so spiritualized, as you see, his body radiated holiness. He just had to cover his nakedness. That's what Mar answers. What did Moshe wear? He only wore a white tunic, just to cover his his flesh. But in terms of the vestment, his vestment was his body. Therefore, he didn't need big dekuna to officiate. Okay? That's the Shalom Kodesh. Most people don't know it. You say it over, you score big points. Okay. V'od shekvar omru v'sein huzal v'moro avonam lo eim mefortune alein ismu Shinemar Bimalosam. It says you weren't permitted to, how did they cut, how did they engrave the names in the uh, in the stones? Each name they had the Shamir, it was a type of worm, and they would take ink and they would write the name and then they would form the worm, shape it like the letter, put it on the ink, and then it would just cause the it would actually depress the diamond. The sto- colored stone. Instead, nothing was cut, it was a full stone. There was nothing removed from the stone. So it was a full stone. That's, that's Avni Miluim. The stone was complete. Because it's not they, gr- they, they engraved the stone, but rather the, the stone was compressed because this, this, this worm actually 
was, it was a nest, was able to, to, to compress where exactly where it was put. And they shaped the worm based on the shape of the letters, which were written with ink. He says, He says, Avni Miluim comes to them, the stone has to be full, fully intact. They bring the proof from the word Miluim, it shouldn't be cut with a, with, with, with a, a diamond cutter. What's the proof? If Miluim needs to fill in the socket, maybe you could cut it with the, with, with, with the implement. But in Moshe Avonim Shoma Harab Shu Osikim Guma in Enukain. They're arguing the, the reality. Rashi is learning the, how would the stone that was put into the Choshen, where you only saw the face of the stone. Ramban says, no, it's like a diamond ring. What do you have? You have like prongs on the side that hold the, ring, the diamond in place. So you saw the side of the diamond. He says, that's the way the stones were set into the Choshen. Not like Rashi learns that it filled in, the socket was filled in, and you only saw the face of the stone. You were able to see the side of the stones, but it means, he, he, he explains the way the Targum explains, there were prongs on the side that secured the stone on the Choshen. So the reality. I mean, according to Ramban, according to Unklis, it's not valid the way Rashi. The stone had to be seen. It's, it's like regular diamond. How do you secure a diamond? You, sh you see the side of the diamond. So you just don't see the, the top of the diamond. See, you saw the full colored stone, except that it had to be secured. So how did they secure it? To prongs from the side. That's how it was secured onto the Hoshin. And the Ramban says, that's why you said diamonds today. How do you set a diamond in a ring? Also, you have prongs on the side. Kadesh destroy be kolatzad that you should see even the side of the diamond. Vlo yitman yofio it shouldn't be actually concealed. The beauty of the diamond, right? Vahodjor betoch aguma. Therefore, he's arguing on the on, on the reality of the Rashi. Firstly, he's explaining it doesn't the word doesn't mean that. Secondly, factually, it wasn't that either. We have been this here. But that's, you know, okay, you want to tell me about, you want to tell me about cardiology, okay, but the Ramban is talking about something else over here. The Ramban himself says, firstly, it doesn't make any sense that we're calling the stone by this name where it has no relevance to identify the stone. He says, of course, firstly, the Avni Shom also filled in the socket. So why would the Avni Shom refer to as Avni Shom? Shom stones. Call them also Miluim. The answer is because each stone had a name. So why they call Avni Miluim? So it's not for Rashi's reading. Secondly, he's a factually, the way the Targum explains it, it didn't fill in the socket. It actually, it was fully exposed on all sides, and the, how was it secured? With prongs on the side. But what is Shoham? It's the name of the stone. Yeah, like you have a sapphire, you have a ruby. There's a stone called the Shoham stone. I'm not an expert. No, no, I don't know what it came. It may, it may have been a specific stone. Each stone on the ocean had different colors. Right. I'm sure it had a color. Every stone has a color. Whether it's pure white or it's bluish or yellow, whatever it is, I mean, they had that color, whatever they were. To be continued. Never again. Gemara speaks about it. It interchanges. Sometimes it refers to as Mishkan, sometimes it refers to Migdash. Exactly. But the Gemara makes this point, what you're saying. There's an interchange. Sometimes it's Mishkan, sometimes it's Migdash. Okay, let's do Sanhedrin a little bit before the, the Hanukkah crowd comes in. Presuming Isa. He was like, his body was like, 
His body, his body was like Adam Rishon's body. Adam Rishon was naked. It's interesting. The Ramchal writes in the Das Tfunos, it's one of his works, the Ramchal, that where's the neshama of a person? Above his head. There were only two people the neshama was in the body. Adam, before he sinned, and Moshe. Because the body, the neshama is so holy, the body can't contain the neshama. But the Kodam Achet, it was in the body. Moshe, meaning even, Achrach, even after the sin, he was so spiritualized, his body was the receptacle for his neshama. So it works very good with the, with the Shalom, we're saying now. That, w- that was the vestment. That, w- that was the vessel. It's Neus, right, exactly. To cover his flesh, his nakedness. It's interesting. The Gemara says in the... I mean, we'll see. You didn't say that Omar Rishon is the covering of his body, body was nailed. Okay, that, but that's separate. It's unrelated to this. But it's interesting. The Gemara says, let's see, you have a valid uh, vestment, and it becomes dirty. And the coin officiates in it. It's not valid. If it's what 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 is unclean, if it becomes whatever whatever the level of unclean, soiled soiled garment, that vote is not valid. So the body is the soiled garment. I mean, it's the same thing, exact same thing. You have you have the vestment, but but it's it's putrefied. So if the garment is soiled to a certain point, it's not valid. I mean, you can launder the garment, but a human being you can't launder, right? He has to die, he has to decompose. That's T.S.A. Mason. You don't have to have big decor for a. That's something else. That, that's that's a different that, 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 that That's external. Yeah, whatever. The, I'm talking specifically the big decor. I mean, even if you touch your shoes, and your hands are visually are clean, th- that's considered not clean, right? The garment has to be soiled. Okay, we're going to skip the gemara today. Let's do Bishtabura. Look, these guys. You know, I'm thinking of passing on the on this. On the on, on Sanhedrin, the, the, the guys are not involved. It's like tidbits. I think we'll go learn another say from the morale, learn it seriously, and accomplish something. I mean, I learned this many times this pair. I'm doing it for the people. People don't show. So what am I wasting that time for? I'm serious. Last night, also. So it's la- you said it last night. You said it this morning. Thank you, Chris, and Tordis Morrow.